computer talk. So we're going to talk about dead marquees or brands. Recently. Recently ones. Dead. Not like, there's a know, lot of Duesenberg, uh, for example. Studebaker. Oh, I wish Studebaker would come so, back. I mean, yeah. So, like, you're, so, I don't know, like, you've got... You've got we can like, start with GM, because they killed off well, a lot they, recently. Well, they killed, what, so, so, Buick. Is no, Buick's still Buick's going. No, Buick's, Buick, oh, Oldsmobile. So what they killed, Oldsmobile died before. Oldsmobile died in circa 2004, I want to say. The main ones that they killed off were Saturn and Pontiac. Those were the ones that Which Pontiac, the it, you know, I, I, I don't know. I'd like to see what Pontiac would be building now. I, I, I think the Firebird would have been a cooler car than the Crown. Um, yeah. Even though they'd I mean, still be on the they, I mean they were both cool. Didn't they go through phases where, like, because I think the I think the Firebird the was way was, cooler in the nineties. Yeah, the Camaro was always softer looking than the Firebird. The Firebird was always more yeah. aggressive. Yeah. Well, the Firebird had its peaks and valleys. I and feel like where it wasn't had that cool. whole. Even the even the badge was like an arrowhead. It was like it was more aggressive. The cars looked like animals. Like it looked like a hawk or you know. It, it, uh, we're not going to talk about like that. 79, 80 Trans Ams that yeah. like a Hoover vacuum yeah. on the road. But. So they did a couple of interesting cars like in the early 2000s they did our good friend Jared has the G or the G, the Grand G, Prix right. GXP which was basically you know it was an LS4 front wheel drive V8 which was kind of interesting and then so let's talk about when they died what they had because Pontiac's lineup was they had the Torrent uh, which Pontiac, was an Equinox. Was Pontiac had a couple of interesting cars that, like, that are now Really collectible. For example, if you could find like a pace car edition Trans Am, oh, you're talking older stuff. Engine, okay, eighty nine, ninety. Yeah, or or like this, you know, the Night Rider era. Yeah, you know. Well, I was thinking. So why course. did so why did they die? I'm looking at what they had in two thousand eight, two thousand nine when the company well, was Buick's killed. Buick's around because of China. Buick Buick was saved because of China, and GM wanted to get rid of, or the government wanted to get rid of GMC as well. And GM fought them tooth and nail, and they said, no, 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 he, just wait, you will see why GMC is necessary, and, you know, how it's been eight eight or nine years since then, GMC has proven its worth, because it sell like, you think about GMC, and you're like, wait, all they sell is just, like, different badged versions sure. of think, Chevys, think like the Sierra, I think but they, they sell them. I think they could have cut it loose and just made them all Chevys. Sure, but... I, and it's funny because I was supposed to go on an event for GMC up in Canada uh, right now that I didn't get to go to. But I wanted to ask an executive from GMC like what the brand difference is. There's something different. A Chevy truck buyer is not the same as a GMC truck buyer like demographically. They, they, they would have been if there wasn't a GMC. <laughs> I, I suppose so. But the volume of the, of the GMC, it's still, I believe, the fourth – Best selling truck, but it's the big, Ram. yeah, but it's like the same thing with a different badge. It is, but it doesn't cost that much more because you're developing them both at the same okay. time. So that's why GMC stuck around. Pontiac, on the other hand, we remember these cool cars like the Firebird and you know cars like that. In modern, you had the G the G five, which was a Cobalt, the G six, which was I believe an Impala. You had the Torrent, which was basically a Chevy Equinox, and then you had the you had the Solstice, which was one of the only cool cars. That was the sports oh, car. I can't forget the Aztec. Oh, the, well, the Aztec wasn't around when it died. I'm talking about its final, final Bad dying decisions. model lineup. And then you had the G8, which is obviously the most interesting one. That was the one that they were which importing. Is, but, but, Probably the least American of all. The yeah, time. it was it's completely Australian. Australian yeah. So, but it happened to have say Pontiac on it. So that beggars the question: What would Pontiac be doing if it was still alive now? And I think the answer has to be sports cars. Like, just well, make a bunch of sports it, cars with Pontiac back. I think we would have had a, 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 you know, like an SS, you know, version. Like we have now the, the Chevy SS. So the Chevy, it would have continued right. as maybe the G8. Right. Or maybe they could have just sold it as the Pontiac um, I think, I think, Commodore, I think people would which is a better name than we had SS. A Firebird. Yeah. And the Firebird would have been the thing people think about. I mean, honestly, so the diff- so here's the thing. GM already sells the Camaro. It's a two-door, you know, four-seater car. They could have just put the Firebird name on on instead of the SS a different on, on that four door yeah. car and then you would have the brand because the one of the big problems with the SS is like 
what's an SS? Like, it just, it was nothing. It looked like a Malibu. It was boring. So why wouldn't they maybe just take the Firebird name, put that on that I, car, I and then you could do the trick? Because they had, four door, though. well, because the Charger was always a two-door. Oh, okay. The Charger was always Good a two-door. And it doesn't seem like anybody's making too big of a fuss that the Charger is a sedan now. So you do the same thing with Firebird, and then, now get this, you have the supercharged LSA versions of the, of the, Commodore in Australia before right. it became extinct. Make that a Trans Am. Now you've got right. a car that what could compete against a sixty-five to seventy thousand dollar big American sedan with a manual supercharged five hundred eighty horsepower. The, the argument was always that having a Firebird or Trans Am, having a Camaro and a Corvette was yeah. too many sports cars. Yeah, there was, you could. There's a ton of times that the Trans Am was faster than the Vet. Yeah, because it was back in the day more aerodynamic. Yeah. in a lot of ways. But I mean, well, the Camaro the, the was General faster Motors than that at one point. General Motors, even before the government yeah. basically ran them, mm -hmm. has made a ton of bad decisions. Yeah, I mean, and when you're when you're basically running on an infinite budget that the government just keeps handing you money, yeah, you can make all these mistakes and continue. It, it hurts. You look at companies like you know Ford's still around. Ford's the strongest company around. And, yeah, you know, well, they have the F one fifty, which is the best selling. But but vehicle. even Ford lost Mercury. Yeah, but Mercury and Mercury is almost the same thing. Yeah, Except Mercury. Ford, Mer Ford yeah, Mercury Lincoln, was. Yeah, Ford, Lincoln, Mercury. Lincoln's yeah. still around because they need the the high end. The line, high end, and the Mercury Navigator. was sort of like a mid range. That and it was. Do much. it was. It was. Well, that's kind of what Buick is. It was like the Oldsmobile of Ford. Well, the, yeah, and Old, yeah. so Oldsmobile died a little earlier. That was two thousand four. Yeah, I miss like the, you know, I, I I would love to see a Hearst Old again. Or, the, or 442 again. Yeah, the reason why I like Oldsmobile, the reason why Oldsmobile was both cool and also made no sense for GM was they were doing interesting things. Like you had the Aurora V8, which I don't think was used in any other GM products. And it's a the weird looking car. They, they didn't like share bodies. I, like, I, I, I with say the it kind of looks cars. a little bit like a Fisker. If you ever put them next to a Fisker, it kind of looks, it has that the same kind of wall. wall yeah. Kind of look. So Oldsmobile, they made some cool cars and they did some, end, you know, so that wouldn't work in GM structure today because they'd be like, here's your V6 that you can use, like put it in your car. That was part of the reason why Saab didn't really work out either. We'll, we'll get to them a little later because I would love to see some Saabs. Okay. Like I, I'm a huge, that makes one of us. I'm a huge Saab enthusiast, but, um, so Pontiac, you know, the other thing Pontiac was going to do was they were going to bring out a Ute. Uh, they were going to do the G8 but as a Ute, and they p posted the concept, and then the company went out of business, and we didn't get to see that. Yeah, so. but it, there would also have been conflicting with the GMC thing with truck, truck, yeah. truck, truck, truck. So Saturn, that was the other one. Like, Saturn was just like a budget. Cars made of Tupperware? I can't think. Yeah, they were they were plastic, and you could hit it with a hammer, yeah. and it wouldn't dent. They'd get old, and they'd get brittle, and you I yeah, can't. Yeah, I can't think of a lot of reasons why you would want to keep oh, they were Saturn ugly, they were around. Ugly and horrible cars. Yeah, the only reason I would think about it is because, like, I, I I suppose like we had the Saturn Astra, which was a Vauxhall Astra, and it, this is kind of a moot point because GM got rid of Opel. So you want to throw? They're not dead, but GM sold off Opel and Vauxhall in. Europe, which were their European brand, and a lot of Saturns, like the like the uh, the uh, uh, Astra, were were just rebadged Opals only, and, and only... Vauxhalls. So you could have, if you wanted to, turned Vo uh, Saturn into sort of like a you know how BMW has Mini or Mercedes has Smart. You could turn it into like so you could take like the Corsa from Europe. Like they have a really fun little Corsa with like 200 horsepower. It's like a Fiesta ST competitor. So that's the only path that I could really see for Saturn is building like small, but those aren't really but selling when, well. But when now. you think about Saturn, the only car you think about is the Sky. The Sky was a cool, well, you had the Ion, Solstice, which is, you had the Ion, which is two dead car companies, you know. So you had the Ion, yeah, which was I'm, pretty interesting. It wasn't the best but, but, car, but, but the Solstice and the Sky were like the coolest things to come out of Saturn. Yeah, that was yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, you know, and then and then General Motors also Hummer's gone. Hummer is one that. Yeah, but now look what original, even the street H, versions. Yeah, the H ones go for now. Look, have you seen? So there's like a whole cult around modifying H twos. Have you ever driven H twos? I've driven an H two. Horrible. Never driven well, H twos are terrible. A, are are amazing in comparison. Oh, I'm sh I'm sure in comparison. I, I mean, yeah. It, it's like, it's, so here's what I think because. If there's ever a brand that deserves to be brought back, it's Hummer. 
it died during like the you know the the recession when nobody had many money and gas was really sure. expensive. Obviously, it made at the time it totally made sense for Hummer to die. But now, gas is cheap, and the only thing that every car company seems to be coming out with are crossovers, no, that's and that's what the Hummer brand was about. So I think, it will, look this up at home, and I, I hope we can get it displayed on screen right now. Hummer, before it died, came out with a concept called the HX, yeah, um, and cool. it was basically a two-door, like, four-seat. It, it, sort of it was like a Hummer, Hummer and a Toyota FJ. Yeah, like an FJ Cruiser, like yeah, a Wrangler, was, bigger than a Wrangler. It was tough. It was but, Super macho for looking. Day. If GM could just build that with an electric powertrain, I think that so would I, sell better than I think it would. I read, challenge I read a while the back that Hummer was actually thinking about going and becoming its own brand at one point. Like they were. Yes, yeah, so originally it wasn't AC General, right? Yeah. Like AM General or whatever. Uh, yeah. So I mean, that would be cool to become its own company. Yeah. I and I think if anything's going to inspire it, the release of the new Ford Bronco is going to. Yeah, well, the bla- I mean, the Blazer was... came back, and it's not. I, really I know it's. I know it's not going to look like it did in the movie Rampage. Yeah, you know, but because that it just looked like a prototype truck. Yeah, because it was. Yeah, but it it's it's cool. I I, I yeah. miss that. My father had one of those things, and they were they were awesome. Yeah, um, but I mean, Hummer. Yeah, I mean, Hummer is like one of those things where I think it it did deserve to die. I yeah, think, I would have lost. It did, other things. but I think right now is the smartest time and you, to. And you don't see, all right? So you don't see a Zuzu in the United States anymore, which they, yeah, they, they were never really much of. You know, I mean, what was it the Tracker? Well, you had the no, Via Cross. The, uh, the Suzu, you had the Via Cross the Trooper. The Trooper was a great car. Yeah, you had the Via Cross, which was a very interesting car. But you yeah. had the. It was definitely that. You had the. Um, you never see them. Though. You had the Suzu Impulse. Which was super cool. Well, car. okay, the early ones were cool. I like the, the, the Geo ones Storm too. ones. Were I cool. love the Geo. That's another company that doesn't exist anymore. Is well, Geo. <laughs> well, what, what's funny is the G- if, I'm almost positive the Geo factory is now Tesla. I believe so. I believe it used to be right. Numi. Free it was, it's a, a, free new, it was yeah. a Numi factory yeah. where they yeah, did yeah. all the U.S. production of those cars and rebadging them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now yeah. it's Tesla. Yeah. And now it's Tesla. But I mean, so Plymouth is gone too. Which yeah, Plymouth. Was, I mean, was, was like, like Mercury. To at, yeah, at the end they were just building like it was more like Saturn, where they were just building like the cheaper versions of all the Chryslers and Dodges. So they had the Plymouth Breeze, which was a neon, just like rebadged and worse. So like them, I don't. All right, I'm gonna make the case for Saab <laughs> because like I, I don't know. I would just love to have like a rival sort of sub luxury you know because like you have Acura and Infinity that are kind of these but Saab was such luxury a brands. weird car company of course everything about those cars was weird of course I mean we used to, when I was growing up uh, I, I detailed cars for a car dealer for a while and what we would do to the rookies mm. that would come in is we it was a Saab dealer yeah and we'd send them out and give them the keys to the car and tell them to you, move the car. You couldn't put it, it in gear or you'd right, have to well, put well, it in the reverse. The key was in yeah. the center console. Yes, yeah. And you'd lock, you could lock it in first gear or reverse yeah. or whatever it was to get the key out. Yeah. And you'd just see this poor kid not getting get in the car <laughs> with the key going, look, try, yeah. like, try to figure it out and just, just and we'd be in the show of like tears. Yeah. You know, but it was like, it was one of those things that you, that's one of the weird things about Saab. The engine backwards. Yeah. It's easier to put a clutch in a Saab than yeah. a fan belt. Yeah. I mean, so Saab is interesting. I mean, Saab's actually technically coming back. I think a company in Europe bought it, and they're gonna they're gonna take like the shells and then they're like, it. well, they're gonna put an EV drivetrain in it, which is like, you know, you're putting a, an EV drivetrain in a car from like two thousand that was designed in like the late two thousands. Like it does. Yeah, I I don't put much stock into it um so as far as Saab really coming back don't think that's really going to happen well, I mean you look at Alpha Alpha came back I mean they... but Alpha was always making cars the I mean yeah I suppose but Alpha was always making Mainstream. cars in Europe no well Alpha had always cars in the US I mean, that Maser- was just a return Maserati was one of those companies that kind of you kind of the bi turbo was like and you didn't hear about it for a while and yeah all of a sudden you know, they're building the Gran Turismo which is yeah a, Kind of well, they had well they there. had the the Grand Sport before that, which was oh, quarter four day and all that stuff. But now, yeah, the now they're just there. kind of eh. but yeah. So those give, cars, give So I wanted to mention one car company that's way long deceased. That I but I but I I wrote an article. Lasalle. 
What? <laughs> yeah, no. So I wrote an article on CarBuzz if you want to go check this out. It's five car companies that I think deserve to be Oh, I know, right off the bat today. You're say. today. So, so here's my argument for Hummer was that people like SUVs and they're selling extremely well. You know what else is selling extremely well? Uber luxury cars. It seems like yet, poor my people block are. It's gone. My block has returned as a sub brand of Mercedes. So they sell a Mercedes Maybach S Class. So instead of being a Maybach, so it's like a slim Mercedes. It's sort a, it's of, a, yeah. So yeah, or it's AMG. or an AMG. It's it's a Maybach instead. So the company that I'm referring to is Duesenberg. Yeah, so if you're a 12 year old who's listening to this video, you might not know what Duesenberg is. But if you've ever heard your parents say, "Wow, that's a doozy," yeah, that's it's a, it's a long, you know, and we're t we're talking like 30s, 20s. And if 20s you ever want to see an engine that can sit on its oil pans about that high, yeah. yeah. So Duesenberg in like the 20s and 30s were Rolls-Royce competitors. Or better. Or better. Yeah. Rolls-Royce would always like yeah. aim to be what, what Duesenberg was. And Duesenberg, they just couldn't survive the Great Depression. Sure. So, you know, we're talking very old and cars. And the name sings and the cars were beautiful. And it, it, yeah, I think it was... They had a beautiful, a yeah, they had a beautiful, uh, you know, emblem. I, I mean, Rolls-Royce still does the Flying Lady. But see what Duesenberg's, like vintage Duesenberg sell for. You're talking about like multi-million exactly. dollar cars. So... So here's my suggestion. If anybody, if if we have any GM executives, <laughs> please listen to my to my plea. Buy Duesenberg. I think you should GM should buy Duesenberg. Somebody's got to. Yes, yeah, somebody owns the rights to that name, or else somebody would be producing cars right. under that name. I think, but I would love to see somebody buy. Uh, maybe I I just think it would fit GM because they're they have more. Like I don't think it would work if Ford did no, it or or if Chrysler. God forbid. Uh, if they if Fiat Chrysler had any money to do that, um, but yeah, Watch I think now Volkswagen will go out and do it. Yeah, Volkswagen. Will go out. We <laughs> are making we are making the We're, amazing American luxury. We don't, we don't own an even number of car companies. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, well, they they already own Bentley, so it wouldn't make sense. So here's what you do: you bring back Duesenberg, and you, so Cadillac. We know that GM can build. Sexy cars. Sure. Have you ever seen the CL concept, the Escala concept? Sure. Um, Buick has the, uh, the Avista. Beautiful concept cars. And then Buick and Cadillac, they're wimps and so, they won't build so them. Interesting. Buy Duesenberg and build these uber beautiful hundred plus thousand dollar luxury cars. I agree partially with what you're saying is uh, a lot of the Pontiac people, a lot of the, the, the guys that were behind. Fireworks went to Cadillac. Yeah, when when Pontiac poofed. Yeah, you know? um, and I think that's why we have the CTSV and the ATSV, like yeah, which is a great that car. Was a lot of the Pontiac yeah. is, but so let's get to the pinnacle of of, of dead brands yeah. in the modern world. Scion. Scion. Well, yeah, okay. It's a Scion. Uh, so, yeah. Scion. So I mean, failed attempt well, to capture well, the a youth. car. Well, a car company designed and created by. Old oh, yeah, men yeah. who want who thought they knew what well, twenty year olds well, were like. Yeah, but I mean, all right. So, uh, for example, you talk about an era, the Fast and Furious, the early two thousands era. Furious, yeah. Yeah. Although, We're, when did the first Scions come out in the uh, United States? Early two thousands. Okay. I think yeah. I want to say like four or five, oh four or five, something like that. But, um, so this two thousand three, the. The XB, yeah, and I own a few, is an amazing car. I, I could put the most jaded person in the world yeah. in an XB and say, you have to drive this thing for a yeah, week, and they will come back. Look, so it actually drives good. We have a, we have a company one. <laughs> yeah. And Jason. It's ugly, for sure. Jason, but. you've seen him on, on Tunes Talk before, is borrowing it right now. Yeah. And every day, I get a text message from him going, you should sell me this thing. It has genuinely like, good steel. I drove your BB, yeah. which was essentially... And, 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 and the other one's a manual now, yeah. so it's even better. But it's 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 got tons of room. It's comfortable to drive. It's yeah. got good visibility. That's what I... incredible gas mileage. The Kia Soul is the same thing. It, it's the modern version of that car. Well, okay. It's it's styled the same way, but I wouldn't go for reliability. Well, especially well that era but I mean, as far as the boxy shade, yeah, it's yeah. ugly looking, but well, oh my God, of, you but, can but fit everything But it was the best of the box. Yeah. Because the... the the, uh, what's the Nissan one? This Cube, the which Cube was, was, yeah, was yeah. slow and not very reliable. Door in the back. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was practical. Toyota's simplicity mm -hmm. 
in the XB. Yeah. Because Toyota, above everything, has built tons of little transport cars in Japan. So, so that car, that car is iconic. I think there's always, you know, we have the guys that run the Bon Bobagon events and and they're everywhere. And you see Scions in there, and everybody loves them. But the idea behind Scion XB. was we're gonna sell a car with like a crappy radio in the dashboard right. because every, we know but, that but, the person's but, gonna rip it out and the, put a new one. But in. the the, the change in the car worlds will kill it. So it's like, they built a car that's like, here's here's a TC. It looks like a BMW and an Audi and a kid. It's sporty. It's got back seats that you can put your college friends in the back of that recline. They're it was like an them. RSX. It was, you could fold the seats down. Yeah, it had it, a huge it, rear It got decent there. gas mileage. It was pretty reliable to a fault. Mm-hmm. And they were cool looking. Yeah, they, were, they but, weren't so spectacular but, to drive, but... You don't see many of them now. Yeah. You see them occasionally. Yeah. Um, and they were expensive to insure because young people. And a lot of people crashed them. They, you know, they, they made them. They made them what they did exactly what they were supposed to do was you made them fast. Yeah. You put a turbo kit on them or you did this or that or, and, and you just drove the wheels up. It. But like they kind of watered down towards the end. Like, and and the, then they came out with the FRS, which you right. would think would save it. Luckily... Thank God. Like, they took a few of those cars that they were making at the end of Scion's life. So they had the Scion IA, which is now a Yaris IA. That was basically a drove, Mazda. drove one weird car. It's a, kind it's of like, a Mazda. It's not a, yeah, it's not a Toyota I, I kinda, product. I kind of drove – I drove one when they were brand new when they first came out. It's like a slow Mazda 3. It, 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 it reminds me a lot of a smart car. It, it feels yeah. like a smart car when you drive it. Well, you can get a stick shift. It's only like 110 yeah, you're like, horsepower. You're, you wear the dashboard. Yeah, well, like then you have the Corolla IM. It was the Scion IM, became the Corolla IM. Now it's the Corolla Hatch. So, like, that idea of building, like, a quirky, sporty Toyota Corolla, thank God that survived but, I mean, the Scion brand, having you know, because the new Corolla Hatch is great. Having judged car shows for so long, I can't tell you how many Scion XBs I've judged. Yeah. But when they went from the box to the more aero-shaped one, the, yeah, engine, the, X- the engine changed and it was less reliable. Yeah. Um, well, they made well they made an XB that was a different body style. Oh, right? okay. Yeah. And then they made the XA, which wasn't a bad little car. Okay. Um, but they just they started the box, the weird square of the Scion XB was the selling point. Yeah. And then they started making it, and they started looking more and more like little HHRs and PD cruisers, and they kind of looked like something. Yeah, else. yeah, because you're taking. And you lost. The, I mean, yeah, you you're trying to stylize it, but yeah, you're getting rid of plus the every, you know, the so many companies, pizzas companies, mm-hmm. bought. XB is like crazy because it's a rolling billboard, which is why we have them. Well, because think about this: a van, yeah. like you talk about a van. It's all over van. So, so, what is a van shape? It's a box. Or, or like, still, or why would you or... like? So, with an SUV, so you have you know the BMW X6. Mm-hmm. It's an X5 that somebody went like this and cut it's off part there, of the yeah. back and charge more for that. You have less room in the back, Absolutely. and you're getting more. Like, there's a reason why a van. Is a box and it doesn't taper. I mean, you, do the back. Even, you do it even now with the, tra- <laughs> uh, the transit. Yeah. Like, a, but you put your company name on it. Yeah. And it's real. I mean, we do it with, with Car Show Tracker. Yeah. We have one, and all you got to do is find the event, plop your truck right in the front of the event, and everybody has to see your name on it. Yeah. So it's a great advertising tool. I know tons of pizzerias that still use them, and, and on and on and on. But we get to the end, and we get to the point where Toyota goes, "Hey, we don't need this company anymore." We're just going to take the FRS and make it a Toyota, a Toyota, and it, like we did in Japan. Um, Do you think the problem was that it took too long for the brand to make it? Because you had CC, which was like front-wheel drive. I feel like you could have almost called that car the Celica, because that's basically what it ended up becoming. Well, you, you know the, the, the theory, right? Yeah. That it's called the TC because it's Toyota Celica. Toyota Celica. So do you think the problem is that it took them until two thousand thirteen? I like the Celica prior. If if if, if any of you guys have last um, generation, last generation Celica, Celica GTSs, yeah, they had two ZZs, they had six. It's basically yeah, it's a flipped a version car. of an Elise. Yeah, it's a fun car, and they're really cool cars. Yeah, um, and and they they they've aged well. Yeah. If you had one and you kept it nice. Yeah, and they're only like, I mean, I think I think they, I, I want to say you they get were, a perfect one for five grand. I want to say they were like eighteen grand new. And I feel like you could get a perfect, pristine, like, 
eighty thousand mile yeah. one for like five and, and it'd be a great car and it's yeah for great first car absolutely way better than a lot of other front wheel drive cars. yeah I have a friend now that's looking for an RSX but so, I feel like you could get one of those just as easily getting off topic but like Toyota made like we need to do an ep- uh, an episode about weird cars that people have never heard so Corolla they made an XRS. Yeah, yeah, which, yeah, which, yeah. The revs was, are like eight thousand yeah, RPM, was, which was basically the entire powertrain of a Celica GTS yeah. in a Corolla. Yeah, and they were six, six feet. And, and if you ever get a chance to drive one, it was like Toyota drove a Taurus SHO. Yeah, and said we can do we this can cheaper, do this cheaper, and cheaper better, better, more reliable, yeah. and just a little smaller. Yeah, and and that's what it was because it wasn't. A, it would have been a camera. And I know, and I know people still have those cars, and they're and they're they're kind of desirable. It's like the weird Maximas. If you bought like the two thousand and like a two I, and three. Yeah, when, when they had 250 horsepower and a six-speed manual and, and a limited slip And you changed the intake and the exhaust were 280. Yeah. And it was, it was basically and limited slip a 350Z yeah. with an yeah. engine with a six-speed yeah. manual, yeah. front-wheel drive, fun car. The, that was, was the best-looking Maxima, the slip, too, by yeah. far. They got, the best-looking. Yeah. Well, the new yeah. one, I love the way the new one looks, but we're back to yeah, the CBT. Yeah, but CBT, yeah. But the FRS BRZ, it, the biggest complaint, and I was in on board that project early on, but it was like... People complained that the cars weren't fast, and Signs have never really been fast. Like they've yeah, never, never been fast. And and well, that was the fastest the, Scion the, model ever. You know, and the FRS is the we talked about it in, in super in, in iconic cars. The it's it's grandfather is the AE. Yeah. So the AE wasn't fast. The AE was a slow car. I mean, it didn't have yeah. a lot of power. It was a little four cylinder. But it, what it lacked in power, it made it for a beautiful balance. The, one of the best handling cars you'll ever drive. And it looked good. Yeah. And the FRS still does it. I hate people, like, I ignore people that complain about that car. Yeah, I do as well. Because I'm just like, have you ever driven one? It's, uh, it's so good. Like, you know, like, unless you're, the only thing you like is Mustangs and you know, V8 cars and stuff like that, which... I derive a certain the, level of enjoyment from a from a Hellcat or from a V8 Mustang, but not the same type of enjoyment. But, but, you, see, but you see people like I don't know what you hear, but with the FRS and the the, the BRZ, it's always oh it's slow, it's slow. It's, I'm like, have you ever? It's always people that have never driven one. Yeah. Like, have you ever driven one? No. Well, let me tell you something. I've driven a ton of them, and every time I drive one, I think I'm gonna get a speeding ticket. Yeah. Because it's it's a lot. It can go 120 miles lose, an hour. People, like you know, NSX people are going to lose their mind when I say this, but in a way, it's kind of like an NSX. You have to squeeze the fun out of it, and if you know how to drive, yeah. if you really know how to drive, and you're not some, I can't drive manual or blah blah blah, you know, modern motorist, mm-hmm. you can have a ton of fun with that car on the street, on a track. They're not fast, but they're yeah. fun. Yeah. It is a fun car. And, I, and I'd say right now, bang for the buck, it's probably the best thing you can buy to have fun in. I mean... Yeah, the, I mean, we've, we've gone over this time, you know, yeah, so yeah. it's not worth revisiting now, but as far as the Scion brand is concerned, like, I guess there really isn't that much of a reason for it to exist now, the way that... Because, you know, Toyota, the lower-end Toyota models are doing, you know, they carry them over and nobody really seems to care all that much. Scion never had an SUV, so obviously they couldn't exist today. Yeah. Um, and you know, it, it's you know, it was an interesting brand while it lasted. I, I wanted one when I was a kid. I always wanted a TC before I really knew about driving and what different cars felt like. But I, I always wanted either a. <laughs> this will this will show you how uninformed I was. I wanted either a Scion TC or a Hyundai Tiburon as my for, as my for, or a. I I really wanted a 350Z. I really I wanted a 350Z. That, that was the car. I was like, this is going to be my you, first car. But you look at companies like Toyota and, and, and uh, Infinity, you know, like uh, Nissan, and yeah. they created this brand. Mm-hmm. Toyota created Lexus, and it became the biggest thing around. It, yeah. Out of all the companies that have created another brand, and they thought they it couldn't plum- it went up And they said, oh, let's build a sporty car brand because we built a luxury car brand. And I think what they should have done in the beginning is just been like, hey, this is a Toyota TC. Yeah, or Celica. What, you know, I, what was, I think it would have been so much better. What was the game? I know. It wasn't. So this might interest you, and this is a pretty good place to end, because now we're sort of in the rebirth on Toyota. And that is that Toyota has this brand that I have not heard a single announcement about it in the U.S. 
It's called Garmin. It's G R M N is going to be the abbreviation. So okay. they already have. Forget about the GPS. Well, it's a it's a race. T- yeah, the yeah. Garmin nav systems, but it's a race team basically, and they're sort of becoming what like Nismo is to Nissan and what AMG is to Mercedes. Well, I know it's TRD. Yeah, but TRD was always sort of an American thing. This is more of a European, okay. Japanese thing. So they have race cars like Le Mans. They are going to have a GRM and car. And they already have a Yaris, a GRM and Yaris with like, I think it's a naturally aspirated engine, 200 horsepower. It's like a Fiesta ST. But we don't get it here in America. So I'm waiting because the rumor was that it wasn't actually even going to be called a Toyota Supra when it comes out. It was going to be a Garmin Supra. Oh God, here we go. Yes, which would be, that would be really weird to have a Supra that's not Let, a Toyota. Let's just stack the bad ideas on top of each other. But as a performance brand, I'd like to see it. I'd like to see a, the, the new Corolla see, hatchback, a, a, a Garmin version. Sucks. I agree. I don't like the name, but I think from the ashes of Scion, this, whatever they want to call it in the Scion, U.S. Scion, at least sounded <laughs> I, what, Toyota can do something because I – so I just had the CHR, and I hate that I didn't get to show it to you. The CHR, it has a CVT. I, I, think, I, would have been, I think I would have been like, oh, CVT, and that would have been. It was, I just love the way that it was one of the best CVTs I've ever driven. Really? It was it felt like an automatic unless you floored it and like you know, when you right, floor so, it, so, CVTs so, come so up. Quickly, did you like it? Yes. You really I have so so if you check out my reviews on Carbuzz, I now have a ranking system. Go on my Instagram, it's at Carbuzz Jared, um, and look down. I have a picture that shows I have a new ranking system for all my cars. I got tired of just like writing a review and then sort of it being out there in the void and people not really know. I want to just look back. Did I like a car? Did I love a car? Or did I think it was somewhere in the middle? So I have four rankings. It's going to be shop like shop around, which means don't look at this car. Like look at one of its competitors. Keep going. Um, along, along. So then I have worth a look, which means like there are plenty of better cars, but for the right customer, like this could work out really well. There's great buy, which is. Really good car. It ha- it's not perfect. It has a couple of issues. Um, and then there's must buy. So that's a car that's a segment leader that I would choose above all you know else. So the CHR had a couple of issues. It's very heavy for what it is. Really? It's 3,200 pounds. Which, so for example, so, that is, so an HRV, which is Honda's little one, yeah. with all wheel drive weighs 3,100. And the Toyota is only front wheel, and it's heavier. So that's a huge weight discrepancy. And because of that, its gas mileage is not that great. It's like 27 and 32, and there's other cars that get, like the Nissan Kicks gets like 37. Do you, think, do you think that Toyota tends to build cars a little more heavy to be a little safer? Possibly. Do you do that that's in the mind? Because like, I could be you always get with my Lexus, so I was like, "Oh, it's heavier," but it's not really that much heavier. Could be so, but as far as the steering was concerned on that car, as far as the chassis is concerned on that car, it's one of the best ones I've driven. I, I just, it got a great. It's gonna get a. It hasn't gone live yet, so it's got it, great, it probably will when this video goes it, it, live. But it's got great curb appeal. I think it's got great curb appeal. I think it looks cool. It's funny that you, that that car would have been a Scion. Had that car was originally supposed to be a Scion. Mm-hmm. But, you know, these development yeah, times, probably, you know, well, lag, well. lag out for so long. Um, but that, you know, it's an interesting car. Like, in other markets, you can get it with a manual. You cannot hear, unfortunately. But when well, I drove... That's dro- never stopped us before. Yeah, but when I drove... Yeah. Well, Toyota did... I don't, you remember at SEMA, they did a 600 horsepower yeah. version with a manual. Yeah, but at <laughs> SEMA, we've seen Camrys with Ex- flip-up ex- bodies. Exactly. And so, so that CHR... I think would be a prime candidate for this Garmin thing. Put a manual in it, six-speed manual from the new Corolla. Doesn't need to have that much horse. Two hundred horsepower would do it for me. Two hundred horsepower, and that would be the best car in the segment. I've heard that it was it was originally designed to be a replacement for the Rav Four. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. Bit yeah. smaller. Yes, it's definitely smaller than and the Rav Four. The Rav Four has gotten so big now. Yeah. That you look at it and you're like, whoa, that's a ra- like the Rav Four is so bigger I, than the original I, Highlander. I think I think that um, you're going to see a bunch of those HCRs at SEMA this year. The CHRs, yeah, yeah, the I, CHRs. Bl- I I think so too. I think you're going to see a bunch of them, and I, I I just I just dig them. I don't know why, but I dig them. Yeah, I you're one of the people. Uh, I wrote that 
it, you know, in my review that it's one of the most polar, I think it's the most polarizing car I've ever had because people like you love the way it looks. I thought, I liked the color too. It was emerald green. And I think some I'd people get it in a more neutral color, but yeah. Well, they have a, they have a gorgeous blue. I'll show you after this video is done. That is, because they're green, they're not doing the green on 2019, unfortunately. But other people told me it was the ugliest car that they've seen. Like, oh my god, it's like the... So, it was... You I were, like it more it was, for that. Yeah, you were very much on... Yeah. And it was so very... Like, and it was very... You know. Oh, there were no people in the middle like, yeah, I kind of like it. You either loved so, it or hated it. So, on, yeah. close the top. Yeah. Do you think any... If you can go other than Hummer, do you think any of these dead companies have a chance of coming back? I mean, I spoke about Saab coming back. I don't... The problem... I don't think GM... I don't I don't think GM will have, as much as I want them to buy Duesenberg. <laughs> I think GM, if anything, should lose more. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I get what you're saying. The only way that I think that these companies are ever going to come back is, look this up, there's a new law in the United States where you can build, if you're building under a certain number production number, it doesn't have to meet crash or emission standards. So low production. Which is why DeLorean is, is back. DeLorean it exists now. You can buy a brand new DeLorean. It's Florida, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know where they are. I, I'd love to find they're, them they're and do a review. Here, but so that's the only way that I think these companies are going to come back. If you see like a revival, like you know how Singer do is doing like these. That? That, you, I think that would be the perfect thing. Abs for that. Absolutely. Or, hey, we're or, gonna build or Hummer. We're going to build 500 cars a year. So you know how they build the Singer 911. Imagine that with a Hummer. So you have a modern diesel engine in that. You have sort of you add sound insulation to make it you know a better ride. So there's a company that actually Absolutely. does Firebird conversions for the Camaro, right? Yeah, there's they've still they yeah they it's just like a it's a body. I, my dad has sent me so many Facebook look, links saying look the Firebird's back. I'll go uh, now. Unfortunately, it's not. All right, guys. Yeah. Well, if anybody has an opinion or they uh, they can think of a car company that they'd like to see back. Throw it in the comments. Yeah, tell us what you'd like to see revived. I mine's yeah, Duesenberg. I, 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 <laughs> Yours is yeah. Scion. I, 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 I see, yeah, no, I think Toyota could do it without it. But yeah, I, I think like I would like to see Hummer come back. Okay. Hummer. All right, guys. See you next week.